focus, audio. All right, I think we're good. Hi everyone, this is Edwin from Opus. Welcome to this new Opus Live session about lighting the Opus way. One, two. Now we're gonna go over some basic concepts and we're gonna start with the exposure triangle. These three are the main settings to understand and properly use light in your photography. Aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. These three are always related no matter the camera mode you're using. In manual mode, you're handling all three of them, which you can do if you have the time and knowledge. And on semi-automatic mode, you set one or two of these values and the camera handles the rest. This is good when you don't have that much time and you know already the result you're after. The main point is that you know what you're giving up if you're increasing or reducing each of these settings. If you use a lower ISO value, you'll have less noise, but you'll need a longer shutter speed or a bigger aperture. If you need your photos to look sharp and with a good depth of field, you'll close your aperture, but you will need to bump up the ISO and drag your shutter speed and possibly need a tripod. Now we're going to talk about the quality of light. To keep it simple, this refers on how hard or soft the light is on the subject and how short is the transition from highlights to shadows. Direction of light. We only mention this as a concept because we are very specific about this on our guidelines and some of our photographers don't follow our instructions when they have the possibility to do so. White balance and color temperature. For the sake of keeping this short and clear, we can establish that different light sources have different temperatures. These changes in temperature come from different color casts, ranging from red when it's colder, all the way to blue when it's hotter. This is important to understand because the objects and people in your photographs are going to have a warm, neutral, or cold tonality depending on your creative vision. But for commercial purposes, we need to show the products, services, and experiences with a neutral look, unless it's specified in the brief or the guideline. That is, the whites look white and not orange or light blue. You can use your camera presets to neutralize a warm or cold color cast. Or you can use a gray card and choose a Kelvin value that will help you be more precise about this. But in the end, it all depends on the time you have and your expertise. The purpose of an Opus shoot. At Opus, we're bridging the gap between photographers and international clients. All the back and forth of finding clients, fixing prices, and editing the content is something that you don't have to deal with anymore when you're working with us. Of course, what we expect from you as a photographer is to take into account the guidelines we give you, read them, understand the visual examples you see in there, and use your skills to get as close as possible to what you see in those guidelines. The content you produce has the purpose to sell a service, a product, or an experience under the instructions given by the client that we then translate into those guidelines. Being able to understand that and doing what is possible to get those visuals is what it takes to be a successful photographer with Ocus. Some of this gear is mentioned in our guidelines and some of it you will find yourself needing it over and over again. To work with Ocus, you can use either a crop sensor or a full frame camera. But if you haven't already, you will find use for one or the other according to the way you work. I'm talking about size, ergonomics, weight, and range of functions. Then you need a tripod. It will help you on 99% of the situations. The other 1% is going to be an obstacle. Think of portraits when you have to deal with small spaces or you have a very limited time to work with a person. A tripod will add value to your work as a photographer because it will help you keep a consistent height and angle throughout a shoot. It will also free your hands to properly place dishes or move some elements in the frame. Consider getting a tripod that lets you change different heads. These have gotten really cheap in recent years and I got mine for less than 50 bucks. A 5-in-1 reflector is a very versatile and cheap tool to improve the quality of your photos. You can use it to block light when it's coming from different directions. You can also use it to reflect some light to fill in some deep shadows that will distract or not help to give a good impression of what the business is trying to sell. You can also soften light when it's coming directly from the sun or the ceiling, or even change the color of the light if you don't want the subject to look either too cold or too warm. It depends on the aesthetics you're after. A gray car will help you set a proper white balance in your shoot. It is a must-have tool for food and architectural photography. A simple background is highly recommended for food photography. It is one of the best investments you are going to make while working food photography with Ocus. We advise you to look for white marble 
or light wood that doesn't have too much texture. There is not much to say about this, but it can save you from a disaster. Also, a spare memory card. Same thing, it can save you from a disaster, and redundancies like these are the type of things that make a professional photographer. These will help you mark positions of your plates, of your tripod, and also help you fix a background, a piece of cardboard, etc. In short, don't underestimate them. Dish and props. When you're expected to bring props with you, it's good to have some spices or leaves that you can use if you see them in the examples of our guidelines. Carrying a plate in case you need it is another way to ensure a successful photo shoot too. This is the type of gear that will make your life way easier, but it's not mandatory in order to finish and overcome challenges on a photo shoot. A camera remote shutter or a mobile application to control your camera. This will help you reduce vibrations when you work with slow shutter speeds or even act as an assistant when you take care of the focus and composition and you might need to hold something in place while the camera is doing the shooting. It can be as simple as a remote with only one button or as complex as an application that also acts as a remote screen so you can see what the camera is framing and make some adjustments on the composition. Consider getting this for true 90 degrees hero shots. The advantage of having this is that once you set it with your camera and frame the scene just the way you want it, you can use it along with your gaffer tape and remote shutter to try different compositions for your hero shots. Moving plates, props and whatnot without worrying if the food is in focus, granted that you locked the focus on your camera before. Speed lights or studio flashes. If you work mostly on a studio environment, studio flashes are the best option. But if you are constantly moving with your equipment to different locations, I would advise you to get the lightest equipment you can, and this means speed lights, for the size and weight. The biggest advantage that studio flashes have over speed lights is the power and the modeling light. But we're going to talk about that later. You'll need to think about the way you are working for now. Umbrellas or softboxes. Umbrellas are the quintessential tool when it comes to flash photography. Their biggest advantage is their versatility and cost. They are really handy in many situations and they are really easy to replace it if you break them. Softboxes follow almost the same principle as umbrellas, but they have a different way of casting light. It is more directional instead of spreading it as much as umbrellas do. They are also more expensive in general, which to use depends on how detailed and professional you are with your work. Before going on site, make sure of the following. You have the right equipment for this shoot or the ones you're having that day in case you're scheduled more than one photo shoot or video shoot in the same day. I recommend you to have a list of all your equipment in your phone. So when you leave each site, you can check that you're leaving with everything that you have with you when you arrive. Also, if the video or photo shoot is going to require people signing image rights, make sure to have physical copies for enough people to sign. Lastly, make sure that the on-site contact know that you are on your way and he also knows what you're going to need to work. That means available space, rooms to photograph, or dishes with their names. This will set you for a good start and possibly a successful shoot for any client. Now we're gonna go over some of the advantages of using natural lights. First, it is really easy to use and it also gives a more authentic, natural feeling in many situations. It could be really inconsistent depending on the weather and this could work against you during a photo shoot. I'm talking about hardness, intensity or color of the light. Also, some spaces do not have access to natural light. This is something that you should discuss in advance with the restaurant owner, for example. If there's not enough light available, you'll have to use a higher ISO, which in turn will reduce image quality. Or you can also use a tripod. Now we're going to share with you some advantages of using artificial lights. One, it is more flexible than natural light, so you can be as precise as you want. Two, it, is, it, it produces consistent results throughout the whole shooting, talking about intensity, quality, and white balance. Also, if used correctly, you will get a high level of quality no matter the time of the day. On the downside of having uh, to use artificial lights is that it produces less authentic results if it is not done right. Also, it needs more time to set up the whole equipment. It also forces you to need more space to work with for setting the tripods or the lights. 
And lastly, it requires more practice to get good results. Using flashes doesn't guarantee a better result than natural light. Now we're gonna go over some challenging situations and we're gonna tell you how to overcome them. The goal of this section is going through some of the most frequent challenges related to light that our photographers have to deal with regularly. And we're going to give you some advice on how to work around them to get the shots you're after. Take note of the challenges you find and then recreate them when you're back at home to know how to react next time you find them. Working with direct sunlight. If it's full photography, you'll need the five-in-one reflector to soften the sunlight without blocking it. Remember that you will need to prioritize the area around the plate, but not necessarily the whole table. No access to daylight. If you're working only with the lights the restaurant has and you didn't have any additional flashes, you can use your five-in-one reflector to soften the light from the ceiling. Place it above the plate and outside the frame and reduce the shutter speed to what you need before blowing up the highlights. This should reduce hard shadows and hard highlights at the same time, not having enough space. Ask the on-site contact to help you get as much space as you need. If this is not possible, try closing the tripod legs of your camera and flash. And lastly, consider using only the 5-in-1 reflector if it's not a VIP mission. You need to prioritize which color is the most neutral one, or in other words, the less problematic one. Then you block the other one with the 5-in-1 reflector. This won't fix the problem completely, but it will reduce it at least to a point where we can recover it in post-production at AUKUS without needing the raw files or reshooting it. Distracting color cast on your shot. If you're struggling with distracting color casts on your shot, try changing the white balance on your camera to get rid of it. If that doesn't work, your other alternative is to use a flash with a shutter speed below 1 250th of a second to kill as much ambient light as possible and replace it with the one from the flash. Hopefully that's been helpful for you guys. Please send us any questions or comments below on this video or during the live conversation. Thank you and talk to you soon. Bye.